Yo, what's up, nerds? MTG Man back after however many weeks. Just, you know, live with life to the fullest, all that, you know. Uh, big, big MTG Man stuff going on. Um, I'm working on doing a Sharpie Cube and showing some of that off because you guys seem to have some interest in that. Um, and, you know, kitchen table showdowns winding down. Uh, I've got ten more today, but, like, let's, if we look at my decks, sure, it seems like there's a lot, but some of these are just, like, a handful of cards, a handful of cards, you know, like, it's not really even, like, a deck, it's just, like, a one card I think I want to build around, um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, first up today is Merfolk, so Merfolk is, um, a very creature-heavy deck, uh, very land light deck. The whole thing is we try and get Mero Regery out, um, and it's gonna give all our other Merfolks, um, plus one, plus one, which is cool. Uh, but also whenever we cast a Merfolk, we can tap or untap target permanent. So if we cast a Merfolk for one mana, uh, we then untap that one land to get another mana. Um, and then if we keep drawing cards whenever we cast a creature, more moral for more merfolks means more draws and we just keep going uh so we have some one drop merfolks um mostly so we can just cycle through with them also some of them have solid effects um you know countering spells bethic biomancer can adapt but you can also put counters on it with jade bearer things like that um stony brook banner it sure it costs two but it's gonna then make our other merfolks cost one less and yeah a lot of them cost one already but it'll make our next Marrow Rear J cost less. Rid, rid, regery, re, regery, whatever. Um, uh, Svelum, just because it can draw us cards. Um, it'll give her Merfolk's Ward, whatever. Um, another cyclable Merfolk. Then we use Distant Melody to keep our hands full. Um, you know, in case we aren't drawing as much as we want. Winding way to get Merfolk and or lands to hand. Um... Deep Root Pilgrimage to just create more more folks, and same with Deep Root Waters. Then Forest Islands and Temple of Mystery. It's a very simple game plan. It's just kind of a flood the board type thing. Um, we don't keep. We do keep. We are going to put Temple... We're going to put Island to the bottom. We're going to go Temple. We're going to Scry 1. We're going to put Curse Catcher to the bottom. We're going to go to turn 2. We're going to play a temple. We're going to scry one. We're going to put the island to the bottom. Um, we'll go one. We'll play Tide Shaper. Pass. We'll go one. Um, we'll play a Benthic Biomancer. We'll play a Jade Bearer. Uh, put the counter on Biomancer so that we can draw a card, discard a forest, uh, go to the next turn, play an island, I think... We play Regery. I think... Ugh, this is painful here because... Yeah, I think I think we just play another Regery. So over, you know, turns, we could swing in. Um, you know, we have what, two 2-2s two and a 1-1, one, one, so we could have been getting in for damage. Then on this turn, we... Uh, yeah, Distant Melody. We draw five. We play a force for turn. Um, go turn seven. We are gonna stone. No, we're gonna play a Redre, which we have two out already, so we'll get to untap two lands. Then we'll play a uh, Banneret, so we'll get to untap three lands. Then we'll play a uh, Svelum, sorry, a uh, Svelum, so we'll get to untap three lands. We'll float a forest and have it untap. So we have, one, we wouldn't float the forest, we'd float an island, sorry. We use the blue floating, um, float three more, uh, and then keep floating mana, and then untapping stuff when we play our next merfolk play winding way we're gonna put the top four creatures into our hand um we're gonna use the floating mana to play regeray 
Um, just so whenever we play a curse catcher or like a one drop merfolk, we're now untapping four lands. So we can tap four lands for mana to just keep floating shit, uh, keep benefiting with deep root pilgrimage. And then I think we would move to turn eight and just swing in. You know, we'd play Winding Way, move uh, the creatures to hand, swing in again, and that's basically how the deck wins. Um, the lower land count kind of hurts the consistency, but I just really wanted a high Merfolk count. So I'm going to put it in, like, the B tier. It's, like, pretty good. Um, not great. Uh, next up is Swap. Swap is an Aura Swap deck. If you don't know, Aura Swap is a keyword ability that only Arcanum Wings has. Um, there's never been another card printed with it. Basically, you can pay two and exchange it with an aura in your hand, like Colossification, to give something plus 20, plus 20. Um, so what we do is we get an infect creature like Blight Mamba, Glistener Elf, or Iker Claw Mirror. Um, we swing in with them while they're equipped with Arcanum Wings. Um, the opponent probably won't be able to block because they'll have flying. After blockers are declared, we activate Aura Swap. It'll get plus 20, plus 20 when we swap it for Colossification, and then we deal 20 Infect damage. So, if they weren't going to die from the 20 already, uh, they die from Infect. Um, we have Nature's Claim for removal, Ops, uh, Slundy Visions to get Instants and Sorceries to our hand, Spell Pierce to counter, and then the Instants and Sorceries we want to be getting to hand are like commune with the gods, commune with spirits, and commune with nature to either get creatures uh, in our hand that we can play, or uh, get enchantments so that we'll have both parts of our, like, you know, that we can swap. Um, and then Forest, Islands, and Temple of Mystery. I think we have to keep it. It hurts, but we have to keep it. We're going to go one. We're going to put that to the bottom of the library. We're going to go turn two. We're going to commune with the gods. Um, look at the top five and put an enchantment into our hand. We're going to put another uh, Wings into our hand, the Resco in the graveyard. Um, go to turn three. Temple. Look at the top. We're going to exile, or we're going to move it to the bottom of our library. I usually just put things in exile because I'm not really sure how to put things on the bottom of the library. Um, we are going to... There's two ways to play this, I think. We play Vision, uh, look at the top six, put an instant or sorcery into our uh, uh, into our hand, and the rest on the bottom of our library. So we're going to put um, Commune with Spirits into our hand, rest on the bottom of the library. Uh, we will Commune with Spirits, look at the top four, um, put a land or enchantment, we are going to put the forest to hand, put the rest on the bottom. Um, I think we equip it with wings, swing in for one. Swing in for one. Uh, commune with gods. We are going to hope for a classification. No classification. Um, no, nothing we can do. Forest. Uh, and yeah, I, that was not great. Um, definitely not how it usually plays out. I think definitely it needs to be more consistent. I think I would move it to like C tier. I mean, technically it can be explosive. It can win turn three if you're lucky. Um, but the chances of that actually happening are like, eh. Um, next up is Sliver. Sliver is... I did the Burn Sliver deck that kind of sucked before. This is more of the, like, classic go-wide slivers type shit. Um, so we get Brood Sliver to, like, bolster our numbers. Cloud Shredder Sliver, because Flying and Haste are good abilities. Uh, Fury Sliver for Double Strike. Jim Hide Sliver to help our slivers ramp. Homing Sliver to help us search for slivers. Might Sliver to just bump up our board. Muscle Sliver, bump up the board. Same with Predatory Sliver. Striking Sliver, because first strike is good, plus it's a good turn one play. Two-headed Sliver, because Menace will just make us harder to block. Uh, then Wizard's Rockets for color fixing and draw. Cathartic Pyre for removal and draw. Path to Exile for removal. Return to Nature for removal. 
Harsh Mercy, um, this will just let us destroy, we choose Slivers, alright, there's no other creature type we want to keep around, um, and the opponent, unless they're also playing a typhal deck, really has nothing they can do about it, besides saving, like, their one most important creature, uh, Winding Way to get Slivers to hand, and then Evolving Wilds, Forests, Mountains, Plains, and Unclaimed Territory, because it can just act as whatever color we need for Slivers. Um, I think we keep. Sure, three Cloud Shredders a lot, but we Wizards Rockets, uh, Unclaimed Territory, Cloud Shredder, um, so, Muscle Sliver, Wizards Rockets for red, draw. Um, swing for two, three, sorry, sorry, uh, swing for four. <laughs> um, and we probably should have swung with Cloud Shredder last turn too, but it's fine. Um, we're gonna play a Predatory Sliver, swing for nine. Um, we probably could have played another Cloud Shredder last turn. We would have gone like... Uh, yeah, yeah, um, swing for 12, and then homing sliver, cloud shredder sliver, and just swing in for win. It's, it's pretty consistent, you just go wide and win, um, unless the opponent has a good amount of removal, there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, next up is America, so America is a combo deck. How does America work? Um, not very well. Um, it's partially because it's red, white, and blue, but also there's metaphors and things that could be drawn. Um, so face the past. Whenever a creature is put into the graveyard from play, tap or untap all creatures that share a creature type with it. Um, so we have Thraben Doomsayer that'll create humans, and then if we were able to, like, sacrifice those humans, it would then untap Raven Doomsayer to then create another one, do that infinitely. Well, what are we going to do with our civilians? Well, of course, we're going to throw them to war. Uh, you know, Goblin Bombardment. Um, so you create a human, you sacrifice it with Goblin Bombardment, deal one damage. Because a human died, we untap all humans. Um, then Thraben Doomsayer gets untapped, so we tap it to create another human, and you just throw it at the opponent. <laughs> um... We use Moon Bless Cleric to get our combo pieces. Uh, Drift of Phantasms, we can transmute to get combo pieces. Chromatic Star, Prophetic Prism, and Wizard's Rockets are color fixing and draw. Um, a Braid's removal, Disenchant is removal, Spell Pierce is a counterspell, Cathartic Reunion is draw. Um, and then Evolving Wilds, Mountains, and Plains. Very, I mean, it's, it's a three card combo, what can you say about it? Um, I think we have to keep this because it's got two combo pieces. Uh, island, m mountain, I think here we, Cathartic Reunion, discarding Wizard's Rockets, and one of our faces, draw three, um, So we're going to go face the past, Thraben Doomsayer, pass, planes, um, oh, sorry, played faces last turn, Thraben Doomsayer this turn, I don't know how I fucked that up, um, play a Moon Blessed Cleric. Uh, search our library for an enchantment. Oh, wow. Goblin Bombardment right on top. Um, go to turn six. And then, yeah. So we go Goblin Bombardment. Um, create a human token. Just one. Boop. We sack it to Goblin Bombardment. Deal one damage. It goes to graveyard. Because it goes to graveyard. Um, uh... Thraven Doomsayer gets untapped, and then, yeah, we just do that infinitely. And I don't know, technically, tokens, like, 
get exiled as soon as they hit the graveyard, but they still hit the graveyard, so it still triggers. So, honestly, I think I'm just going to put it in B tier. It's good. It doesn't win, like, turn one, though. Um, next up is Elementals. Um, Elementals is kind of like... I don't know what format plays Omnath, but, um, yeah, you know, we use Omnaths, um, and Risen Reef to kind of, like, ramp out. We also have Yasharn and Fertilid in order to ramp, um, along with Flamekin Harbinger to get your important elementals. It's a ramp deck, basically. Um, it's a ramp elemental tribal. We also get small elementals, like Ral's Reinforcements and Force of Rage, uh, color fixing and draw with Wizards Rockets, Path to Exile for removal, Planner Genesis is ramp and other stuff, Return to Nature's removal, Spell Pierce is a counter spell, Sylvan Scrying to get lands, uh, Thrilling Discovery is a draw spell that also gains you life, um, basically just better than Cathartic Reunion uh, if you're in the right colors, then Evolving Wilds so that we can get like double land turns, um, same with uh, Terramorphic Expanse and then basic lands. Overall, um, it's a it's a kind of mid-rangey deck. Um, I think we keep this. We go Mountain. Um, we go Plains. I think we Thrilling Discovery, Gain 2 Life. We're going to discard Yasharn and Fertilid. Draw 3 cards. Go to turn 3. Um, Evolving Wilds. Search for... Mm, no, we won't evolve in wilds. We forest Sylvan Scrying. Uh, search for an island. We're gonna move that to hand. We're gonna sh not search. We're gonna shuffle. Mm. Island. Uh, Risen Reef. Path to Exile. Something. Um. Thrilling Discovery, gain 3 life, discard 2, uh, draw 3. We are going to um, during our opponent's turn, we are going to discard Thrilling Discovery to uh, cast Force of Rage, creating two 3-1 tokens. Uh, each of them is going to trigger Risen Reef. Um, we get to look at the top. It's not a land, so it goes to hand. It's not a land, so it goes to hand. Um, play another Risen Reef, um, play a Flamekin Harbinger, uh, it's a land so it enters tapped, it's not land so it goes to hand, um, and then at this point, we may look like we're in a bad spot, but, um, Ral's Reinforcements is four more Risen Reef triggers, uh, when I played Flamekin, I would have searched for probably Omnath, and then you just kind of take care of the game from there. Um, I'm going to put it in the good tier. I think I've definitely been building more consistent decks lately. Um, a lot more, like, BC decks, less, like, DF decks. Um, but, you know, it's... It, it, it's not going to stay that way. In fact, I need to change this deck real quick. So, next up is Stupid Storm. Um, how this deck works is we use Multani's Presence, uh, where whenever you cast it spell and it's countered you draw a card and vexing bauble where whenever you cast a spell if no mana was spent to cast it you counter that spell um to basically just keep casting spells that will get countered um and just go through your deck to build up a storm count and eventually get to grape shot and storm off um so it, it plays zero cost cards like chamber sentry ornithopter Street Wraith isn't zero cost, but you can cycle it. Um, not that that adds to your storm count, it's just it can get it out of your deck. Um, Briber's Purse, Shield, uh, Shield, Everflowing Chalice. Jack O' Lantern isn't zero cost, but I just need to fill in the deck because um, we ran out of budget. Um, that's the little change I had to make. Um, and then Tormod Script. Uh, we also have Faithless Looting to just get through the deck to the cards that we need. Um, and then our lands, Sheltered Thicket can also be cycled, which is good, and Temple of Abandoned Scries, um, low land count, as you can tell, um, low everything, that's, that's how this deck works. We're gonna cycle Street Wraith, draw a card, 
we are going to, um, I think it's more important here to have color fixing next turn, so we're going to play Sheltered Thicket tapped, pass. Um, oh, and there's the combo. So, we're going to play a Vexing, we're, we're going to, doesn't matter, we're going to play a Vexing Bobble, we're going to play Multani's Presence, we're going to go to turn three, um, Everflowing Chalice. Uh, gets countered, draws us a card. Ornithopter gets countered, draws us a card. According to our shield, gets countered, draws us a card. Um, Sentry gets countered, draws us a card. Uh, Faithless Looting, discard two, draw two. Uh, gets countered, draws us a card. Uh, play Temple of Abandoned. Mm, no, don't play Temple. Uh, shield, draws a card. Play Temple, Scry. Vexing Bobble to the bottom. Um, and yeah. So, like I said, this is probably the least consistent. I'm going to put it in F tier. Um, but you can see the game plan. You can see what's going on in my head. Um, next up is Sac. Uh, what Sac plans to do is use the spells that are going to create, like, two one ones. Um, Krenko's Command, Dragon's Fodder, Devastating Summons, um, whatever. And then you sacrifice that board of 1-1s to things like Goblin Bombardment, uh, Pitiless Carnage, um, <coughs> uh, Togar, Tarfiend, Prey Caesar Dragon, Malevolent Witch Kite, and, uh, God Eternal Bantu. You sacrifice to them to gain value, um, then when they die, you also get other value from things like Spiteful Prank to spiteful prank stir jesus cathartic pyre for draw and removal showstopper so that when you sacrifice them your opponent's just going to take a shit ton of burn damage um and spoils of blood because if you can like sacrifice 10 in a turn you then create a 10 10 and it's just kind of like a fun card i wanted to add um yeah then canyon slow uh swamps and mountains simple game plan you just create a board of tokens and then you sack them um we're gonna go mountain we're gonna pass we're gonna go mountain we're gonna go uh rally at the whole whatever berg we're gonna create two humans we spawn tokens uh we're gonna go turn three we're gonna spiteful prankster um Uh, we're gonna play a Devastating Summons, sacrifice the mountain that we used to cast it, uh, to create two 1-1, one, one, uh, red elementals, um, so they're 1-1s, one, um, mountain, rally, uh, create more humans, Unfortunately, these are kind of unrealistic because I imagine the opponent's attacking and you're losing humans and things like that. Um, and then we can slow tapped mountain and then we play malevolent witch kite. Woo. Um, we sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens and draw that many cards. So we're going to sack six tokens. Um, we're going to draw six cards. We get six spiteful prankster triggers. So the opponent's burn for six. We draw up to seven in hand. Um, and then I guess we kind of just start the process again. Uh, create goblins. Create goblins. Um, yeah. That's basically how it works. Um, the other really big thing is you can sacrifice three creatures to make Togar uh, only cost two. Um, so it'll be a two mana seven, six, where it'll make your opponent lose half their life when, um, uh, well, their life total becomes 10 when it enters, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I'm just going to put it in C tier cause it's good, but kind of unreliable. We're talking bad though. Choose your fate is bad. Um, how's this deck work? I hear you asking. Well, uh, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. So, it uses cards like Browbeat, um, where your opponent may have them, like, so either it's a three mana draw three, or three mana and your opponent chooses to have five damage dealt to them. Um, Breaking Point either destroys all creatures, 
or deal six damage to a player. Uh, risk factor is basically browbeat, but instant speed, and you can recast it from your graveyard. Um, you basically just cast cards like these that are going to make your opponent make difficult choices. Um, same with like Sin Prodder, where they either get to choose to give you an extra card, or they take a bunch of damage, or... Um, Uh, there it is, Combustible Gear Hulk, where target opponent can have you draw three cards. If they don't, you mill three and it deals damage to them equal to the total mana of those cards. Um, Bloodthirsty Adversary is going to let you recast cards that are in your graveyard, um, just making your opponent make more choices. We play Rift Bolt instead of Lightning Bolt, um, partially because we just want to hire Combustible Gear Hulk. Um, that's... I know there's another reason too, but whatever. Uh, Cathartic Pyre is removal and draw. Um, Fire Diamond, uh, Siblin Soothsayer. Uh, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with mana value three or greater. That's the other reason why we want to be able to hit Brief Bolt with this. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then Goblin Dark Dwellers just lets you recast your shit. You just, you just make your opponent keep making choices until eventually. It's like, gee, I'm at five life. I can't let them, you know, not draw. Um, and then, yeah. So, we'll go turn one. We're going to Rift Bolt. Go to turn two. Uh, Rift Bolt will deal three. We are going to go to turn three. Go to turn four. Go to turn five. Yeah, help. That's what I need. That's what... Where, where land? Where Where land? Where land? Where land? Oh, Forgotten Cave. Where, where land? Where land? Where land? It's a 20 land deck. It should not... Like, I, I just... I don't comprehend how this thing shuffles sometimes. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna retest. Um... Sure, why not? Uh, Forgotten Cave tapped... Uh, Rift Bolt, Forgotten Cave Tapped, Burn for three, um, so either we draw three or they take five, we're just gonna say they take five, um, <coughs> we either destroy their board or they take six, probably they take six, I don't, I don't know. This one's really hard to demonstrate. Um, risk factor, either we draw three or they take four. They'll probably take four. Um, they'll probably let us draw three here. We'll play a fire diamond tapped. Uh, Rift bolt. Risk factor. Uh, they'll probably take three. I like it. You see what I mean? Like, it's really hard to, um, demonstrate. I'm definitely gonna put it in flawed, because it, it's made to be gimmicky, alright? It's more of a fun deck than anything else. <laughs> Next up is Blue Finity. Uh, Blue Finity is a blue affinity deck. Uh, duh. Um, it, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so it uses, um, Kappa Cannoneer generally to win the game. Um, we use Emery to get artifacts into our graveyard, and then we can, like, cast them later. Um, and it can also just be a, a cheap creature. Uh, Sage of Latinam lets us sacrifice artifacts to draw cards. Thought Monitor is going to cost way less and draws cards. Vidalcan Engineer is free uh, mana for artifacts. Iker Wellspring for draw. Lembass for draw. Spare Supplies for draw. Witching Well scries us too. Um... You can see we're not too focused on what the artifacts are. They just have to be small and draw us cards. We can sacrifice them with Sage of Latinam for more value. Um, but they're going to act as what we need for Emery, Kappa Cannoneer, and Thought Monitor. Um, and then because they're all two mana, uh, Vidalcan Engineer will basically just play one of them for free every turn. Um, Metallic Rebuke is just a pretty good counterspell. Um... I'm forging the anchor to get a bunch of artifacts to hand. Thought cast is a cheap draw spell if we have artifacts, and then islands. Um, simple game plan. Let's go. Um, I think we have to mulligan there. I think we're gonna put uh spare supplies at the bottom. 
pass. Like her. No. Sage of Latnam. Okay. Island. Like her wellspring. Um. So we could either, so we draw one from Iker Wellspring. We could sacrifice it to Sage, but I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to go Forging the Anchor. We're going to look at the top five. We put all artifacts into hand. So we put just Widging Well to hand and the rest of the bottom of our library. Um, we'll cast Witching Well. We'll look at the top two. Uh, we're going to put that at the bottom and Iker Wellspring back on top. Mm. Acker Wellspring, draw a card. Uh, spare supplies. Um, enters, draw a card. Um, play an island for turn. Play an island for turn. Acker Wellspring, draw a card. Uh, Thought Monitor is going to cost five less. So a Thought Monitor, draw two. Um, Witching Well. So Cry to put Kappa Cannoneer back on top. We're gonna sacrifice an Iker Wellspring to draw a card. Um, improvise by tapping five artifacts uh, to play Kappa Cannoneer um, and pay the one blue. Um, and then basically we just try and accrue value. I think we tap everything again. Uh, to play another Kappa Cannoneer. Um, we're going to sacrifice an Iker Wellspring with Sage of Latinam to draw two. Um, tap Thought Monitor, run out another Kappa Cannoneer, which they're also artifact creatures. So they're going to be triggering each other, uh, making them unblockable and putting counters on them. And then theoretically, we just swing in with them. Um, I'm going to put it in B. It's okay. It's good. Um... Next up and last up is Ally. So, Ally, the it's an Ally deck. Um, so we use Gideon to create allies um, consistently, or to become a like a biggish creature, or to create an anthem. Uh, Agadema Cultist is going to let us reanimate a creature if we have a number of allies. Uh, Balagan Thief is going to make our opponent discard cards depending on how many allies we have. Um, well. It's going to make our discard options better, depending on how many allies. And it's just going to make them keep discarding cards. Uh, Hata Freeblade is just going to get bigger the more allies that enter. Uh, Diabolist is going to make our opponents lose life the more allies we have. Uh, Harbaz Druid is just a good mana dork that's going to get better with more allies. Uh, Halastria Healer just burns with allies. Andu Cleric is going to gain us life with allies. Wizards Rockets for color fixing, Doomblade for removal, Grizzly Salvage to get cards in our hand and or graveyard, Return to Nature as removal, March from the Tombs in order to reanimate, Winding Way to get creatures back to hand, or not to get creatures back to hand, but get to, to get creatures to hand in general, uh, Retreat to Ameria to create allies or to bump up our board, Ally Encampment, basically it's just a any color for allies, uh, Evolving Wilds, Forest, Plains, and Swamps. Um, I think, real quick, before I test, I think I want to trade out a march for a winding way. I think having more creatures at hand is going to be more important. So we, planes, hot a free blade, pass. Swamp, we'll doom blade something, swing for one, pass. Um, play Agadema Cultist. Um, that'll put a plus one plus one counter on Hata Free Blade. Swing for two. Um, Winding Way. Look at the top four. Put creatures to hand. Uh, so we're gonna put Free Blade and Thief to hand. The rest go into our graveyard. Um, we'll play Free Blade, which will uh, put a plus one plus one counter on our other Free Blade, and then. Uh, we could tap Agadema Cultist to put a creature card from an opponent's graveyard on the battlefield under our control. Uh, if it has mana value 3 or less, we could just steal something. Uh, Swamp, uh, Hagrid, Diabolist. So uh, when it enters, our opponent is going to lose 4, 
And then whenever an opponent or whenever another ally enters, we'll just keep burning them out. Um, create, steal another thing maybe. Um, swing in because they get plus one, plus one counter whenever an, another ally entered. So Hagger would have triggered them. Allies are interesting because there's a lot going on. Um, so you'll have a lot of triggers whenever another ally enters. So like, for example, we play Hagger Diabolist. It has an ETB trigger because it's an ally, it triggers this one. And because it's an ally, it triggers these two. These each get counters. This is going to deal another five. This is going to deal five. And then the opponent's basically dead. Um, allies have consistency. I'm going to put them in A tier. Um, I think... Uh, no, I put them in B tier. I think A tier is basically just like the turn one wins or just ultra consistent. All right. Like maybe not even turn one wins, but if it can combo super, super fast, um, that's where it goes. And that's it. That's kitchen table showdown for the day. Um, I, you know, I don't even know if I'm going to do anything about this. You know, I think I'll probably talk about dusk morn soon. I'm really liking how this set's looking, but other than that, this is MTG Man uh, signing off. Peace, y'all.